welcome everyone to Booten Homes Public Library Happy Hour DIY Shea Butter Lotion Workshop. We are so happy to have again today local artist and educator Vicki Stafford. She'll be showing us how to make this lotion for ourselves with relatively easy to find and inexpensive ingredients, would you say? Yes, definitely. Excellent. Um, you know, I'm almost out of a bottle of lotion um, at home. I have it strategically placed throughout the house and one's almost empty. Um, so I think I'm gonna grab the one extra kit we have and follow along on the recording. Yes, that reminds me, um, this is being recorded and it just takes a couple days for us to trim up the video and then put it on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them as you go along. Uh, you can also type them in the chat if you prefer that, and I'll keep an eye on the chat and ask any questions I see there. If you're having issues with um, he list hearing or if she's going too fast or something like that, you can also pipe up with that or type it in the chat. Um, I think that is it. Most okay. definitely. Great. So I'm going to hand it over to Vicki. Uh, first of all, can everybody see her? She should be the big picture. Okay. See a thumbs up there. Excellent. Okay, great. Take it away, Vicki. Thanks, Sam. So yes, yeah, so I'm Vicki Stafford. I'm a local artist. I've lived in Boonton for about four years now with my husband and two kids. Um, recent graduate of William Patterson University, uh, where I started uh, rediscovering my passion for art after a prolonged trip into the retail sales world. And um, here uh, for about the past year, I've been teaching art classes uh, in conjunction with the public library. Uh, today, I wanted to share with you guys one of my favorite home recipes for uh, cold whipped shea butter. This shea butter is like one of the best things that you can use for your skin. It's especially like I, I use my hands all the time and you know, I'm a mom with small kids. So I'm constantly cooking and cleaning things and my poor cuticles and nails get so ripped up. And so this stuff, I love it because I can rub it into my, my fingers and nails and I don't end up with like chapped dish hands. And uh, it just, it, it leaves me feeling like a lot better and it's not greasy. And I don't find myself needing to reapply it constantly like with those commercial pump lotions. Shea butter is becoming more readily accessible. I don't know if uh, you guys have um, been on Amazon lately, but generally you can get about five pounds of it for around the 25 to $30 range, which while that sounds very expensive, when you whip it like this, you get triple the volume. So you get a lot of like bang for your buck with uh, shea butter. Um, I'm going to show you a step that I did ahead of time for you guys today, because I wanted to be able to consolidate time and you know, take a lot of the stress out of it. Um, when you order shea butter from the internet, it'll come to you sometimes in a Ziploc baggie or it'll be, um, it'll be sealed up tight, but it's traveled all the way from Africa via a cargo ship. So a lot of times what happens is that there's no consistent temperature and it, it will melt and then it'll reset and it'll melt and reset and you'll end up with beads of fat that have coagulated within the uh, body of the butter itself. So one of the first things that you need to do before you make your own shea butter lotion at home is that you have to melt it and strain it, especially since it's a natural product and it's coming out of all of these various villages in Africa. It's really important, you know, you just, you wanna make sure that you've sifted out any sort of like natural agricultural artifacts that might be there, whether it's stones, sometimes bugs, like bits of hair, things like that. Cause you know, th those aren't necessarily things you want to surprise you in your lotion later. So I'm gonna move the camera so you guys can see my stove. Say hi to my wonderful little sourdough starter Iggy there. And I set up a double boiler. Make sure that the water doesn't touch the bottom so that you're not boiling the bottom. And once it has melted, you're gonna have a oily fat. It'll be kind of a a yellowish to a deep like golden color. Not sure if I'll be able to show you guys nicely. Yeah, there you go. It'll almost look like olive oil, honestly. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna strain it the way that I strain mine, easy and cheap. 
one of these nice mesh berry strainers that most people have lying around their kitchens, and then some cheesecloth, which you can get nowadays from Walmart. You can get a two pack of cheesecloth. I think, honestly, it's under $3. And if you're, uh, if you're thrifty with it, you don't mind saving it and using it again, you can get a couple uses out of it. It'll get kind of funny looking, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's just congealed shea butter. For simplicity's sake, though, I used a fresh one today. Yeah, want to look nice. And uh, what I do, very carefully, I'm just going to pour it through. Now, the nice thing about working with shea butter, too, uh, that I, uh, I enjoy since I'm a thrifty home cook is that shea butter is a natural oil. As I said, it's a natural agricultural product. I can actually use the same tools and utensils that I use for cooking to make my lotion and not have to worry that anything is going to uh, get messed up, dirty, or not be, be usable. So... In fact, I learned that in uh, a lot of African cooking, shea butter is actually the oil of preference. It is edible. Um, I would recommend if you decide that you want to incorporate that into your diet. I hear it's uh, got a lot of really great anti-inflammatory properties. You will need to make sure that you purchase food grade shea butter versus the cosmetic grade that we have purchased. And that just goes through additional rounds of like screening and processing to make sure that, you know, there are isn't any of that strange stuff that we talked about before, like the hair or the stones, the bugs that, you know, you don't want to be eating. Make sure that it's been processed with the, the most minimal contact to any sort of like pesticides, herbicides as possible. So comes through, you'll see, it's got a little bit here. Let me bring my camera back this way towards our happy corner. Excuse me, Vicki, if you have a question. Yes? Sure. Can we use something? Can we use something else if we don't have cheesecloth? Um, you could probably use like a cheap piece of like really thin cotton or linen. The thing is, um, it's going to ruin it. So if you don't have cheesecloth, like I said, we don't have. Nobody has to do this step today. Um, I hope that went out in the email. But if you're you're really strapped, you know. I could say try using like some paper towels or something like that, or like I said, a, an old t-shirt that you don't mind parting with because it's going to be permanently oil stained. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, uh, in the email, um, I did mention that Vicki is doing the step, already did this step for you. She is demonstrating it here in case you want to do this again. And then you'll need to do this with fresh shea butter. Is that correct? Vicky? Yes. Yes. That okay. way nobody's left in the dark. I remember the first time I did it, it was like, it was such a scary step. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm melting this. What do you want me to do? And then I realized, yeah, it's, it's really no big deal. And it's, uh, but seeing other people do it and finding some videos, uh, that definitely took a lot of the, uh, the mystery out of it. And so what yeah. I find is Could the, you uh, use, um, if you didn't mind ruining it, or if you had an old one, um, a tea towel or some, like one of the thin tea towels? Um, as long as it's something that isn't going to lint up. That, that's the ah, really important okay. part, because you the, that's the nice thing about um, cheesecloth. It's actually made to, um, to strain and filter. A lot of people actually use it for like making cheeses and yogurts and stuff. So mm -hmm. when you pass any sort of liquid through it, you're not going to end up with... Um, lint and, and fabric bits in your food. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Um, Walmart has a great canning section nowadays, so you really can find it fairly cheap, especially here in town. I can vouch that I have found it here in Boonton within the past month. So once I, I've gotten it wrung out, because you will find that this is actually going to hold a lot of oil, you can just put this to the side. And your hands are going to be oily, but it's shea butter. It's okay. I have a lot of it on my hands, though, so I'm probably going to rinse some of this off. Just a little too much goodness for what I need right now. A little bit of soap and water. And you're good. And then 
This can go into the fridge. Um, minimum, I've noticed, at least for my, my old refrigerator, I need it to be in here for about half an hour or so in order for it to get um, cool enough for me to whip it. Though I personally, I prefer just to strain a whole bunch at once, have it set aside and then make big batches of lotion so that I just have a whole bunch of jars ready to go. Um, so what I'll do, um, pour it, and then I try to like scoop it out, put it into a bag for safekeeping. And then the next day, I generally will, uh, will whip it up. And that way I got strained lotion, uh, ready shea butter, and it's soft. I like to work with it when it's soft as opposed to really hard fresh out of the fridge because that just takes more effort and energy I'm I'm lazy I, I don't want to put more effort and energy so I'm going to pop this into my refrigerator and I'm going to come back all right so for everybody I provided let me see that over six ounces of shea butter. I'm going to weigh mine out now and we can pop that into our mixer. Two and a half, five, Six and a quarter. This is the fussy part. Another six on the nose. Got another question. Uh, Everybody question has six ounces. I saw yeah. that. I did all that work for you guys too. I wanted to make this as stress free as possible. So, well, it's working so far. Well, I like that. That's what keeps me sometimes from doing things. It's like, I don't, want, I don't want to go through the stress or the expense of learning something and then discovering like halfway through that I, I've completely misinterpreted the instructions and messed up. There, there's nothing more frustrating than that, at least for me. But that could be my A-type personality showing through. So um, in the instructions, I let everybody know that they needed to um, take a carrier oil of their choice for this. I'm personally going to use jojoba. Um, for the instructions here, I say that you can do eight tablespoons. If you do eight tablespoons, you're gonna get a nice um, light fluffy lotion. If you do less than that, which is totally okay, um, you get a thicker lotion that sets up um, at the end more like a balm or a salve. Um, so it just depends on what kind of um, consistency you want. If you want something that looks a little, uh, a little more like whipped and light and uh, that has that lighter body when you scoop it up then go with the full eight tablespoons. If you like something that's a, got, got a thicker consistency to it and that you've got to like really like pull it out with like the side of your thumb, then, um, you know, go, go with a little less. I could say anywhere between four and six tablespoons. So I'm gonna add my oil. I'm gonna add two now just cause that makes it easier for my old mixer. And then I'm gonna add the rest after I've gotten that initial whipping in. So we're gonna go. On medium for a minute. Okay, so we have another comment. Um, I Sorry, I clearly didn't read the email. Uh, so did we need to provide our own carrier oil? Yes. Uh, yes. There's lots of different and options. Mm. Um, like I said, most common, um, commonly found in homes, uh, vitamin E, jojoba, coconut. If you have like mental oil, baby oil, that will work just fine too. If you don't mind something that smells a little earthier, then you could even use um, like a virgin olive oil will be just fine. 
And the, with olive oil, I would just taper down the amount of oil. I would go with that balm. Now, are there any concerns, like when I think of using an olive oil, are there any concerns about the, the end product going bad or anything like that? Uh, no, generally not. Um, they, these, are, these are all fats. So I mean, eventually any fat can go rancid, but we're adding um, essential oils to it. And most essential oils, the reason that they're so highly prized is that most of them are antifungal. So that, that will help to keep it. And also um, you're able to add things like witch hazel. You could add, um, a lot of the witch hazel solutions have alcohol in them. So that again is, is antibacterial, antifungal. So they, these tend to have pretty uh, long shelf lives if it lasts that long in your house. But I, yeah. I, I've had stashes last me at least, you know, six months a year with no smell or weirdness. Okay, good. Now. Did you say vitamin E as in Edward or B as in boy? E as in Edward. Okay. And I think of those as coming in little capsules. If somebody wanted to use that, I guess you can buy it in a bottle or something. Um, full bottles. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just never seen it that way. That's at the awesome. end, I'll grab my favorite. Um, it's a brand called Janssen. They have uh, a vitamin E that's actually suspended with almond oil and it smells amazing. It's one of my All right. absolute go-to. Yeah. Okay, so I whipped this a bit. Oh, look at that. My, I've, got a, I've got a handy set of hands here to, to bring things to me. So obviously everything's backwards right now, but it's yeah, uh, Yasin, sorry. My, my, uh, my Swedish isn't so great. Uh, J-A-S-O-N. And they have a skin oil that you can pick up on Amazon. It's even available as a subscribe and save. And if memory serves, I spend less than $15 a bottle on this. And that's for a four ounce. So right now you should have something in there that looks a lot like the starts of frosting, to be quite honest. And we're gonna add more of the oil. I started out with two and whipped it. Now I'm gonna add two more. So that brings me to four. Finish off this bottle here. That's five. I love making lotion too, because it always keeps me from uh, ending up with a hundred bottles of uh, half used different uh, oils in my house. Okay, I'm gonna go with six. For me personally, I like the, uh, the thicker lotion. It keeps my kids from taking big globs of it and then coming to me smeared head to toe in this like fine sheen of uh, shea butter. It's hilarious until it's tragic and everything in my house is slippery. And then you can do 50 to 100 drops of essential oil, which is anywhere between half and a whole teaspoon. I don't expect any person in their right mind wants to sit there and try to count out 100 drops. So I'm going to add one half, one whole. The small bottle is indeed the essential oil, Candace. That's a 10 ml bottle. I can't remember off the top of my head how many drops that is, so you do definitely need to measure it out. And then we're gonna beat this and then I'm going to add my witch hazel. That low. And I move it up higher slowly. That way I don't end up getting splattered in the face.
Now you should have something that's starting to look a little bit like cake batter almost. I'm sorry, Vicki, would you remind me what is the Jason product? I'm looking it up on Amazon and I'm going to put the link in the chat. It is the vitamin E oil. Ah, excellent, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Scraped that down a little bit. Let's see if we can. Yeah, you see, it's uh, nice and gloopy right now, and that's okay. It's a warmer day than uh, I think any of us were prepared for. And so it will uh, definitely melt up a bit, but nothing to worry about. So you need to scrape it down occasionally so that you're whipping um, everything, not just like a little puddle in the center. a lot like cake batter it smells really good it's uh it's loose right now which is totally okay and what you're gonna do now uh where am i i have to write everything down i have such mommy brain i'm gonna add my witch hazel solution now and that is going to be one tablespoon's worth you don't have to add the witch hazel if you don't want to again the more outside liquid and oil you introduce to the shea butter the lighter the texture the vanilla already does like a good job of helping to introduce an antifungal to this. But if you really uh, want to make sure that it stays nice and clean, uh, witch hazel or even rubbing alcohol, just plain old rubbing alcohol or even tea tree oil will do the same job. And so I'm going to add a tablespoon of this witch hazel. Start out slow so you don't end up splashing yourself. And just continue to scrape down as you need to, to make sure that it becomes thoroughly combined and you don't have um, a mass of unmixed uh, lotion uh, fodder at the bottom of your bowl. Okay. All right, so. What I'm gonna start doing is adding my cornstarch. If you have arrowroot powder or very finely um, ground, very finely ground like powdered oatmeal um, or uh, tapioca, that also works really well. Again, this is something that ends up being a matter of personal choice. I like it because it ends up giving a really nice silky finish to, to my lotion and it helps to uh, on colder days, beat out any sort of like bumps that might still be in there even after having melted and strained the lotion. And this is a really quick way too to introduce body to your lotion. You'll notice that a lot of the um, really uh, high grade lotions will, will introduce some sort of starch in there as a um, thickening agent for the lotions themselves.
now I'm going to scrape it down. How's everybody doing? Okay, cool. As you can see, it's actually really, really simple. It's one of those things where like, for me, it was that aha moment. I had a friend who was um, even more hippie vegan than me, um, but single and childless. And she said, why aren't you making your own lotion? And I was like, time? She said, you do realize it takes like all of 10 minutes. And she showed me how to do it. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Spending all of this money on lotions that aren't even making my skin nice. That was four. Here's five. So lotion making has gotten to be like a sisterhood of the traveling pants kind of thing for me. I love to uh, tell people about it. Encourage them to try making their own uh, beauty care products where they can. Scrape this down and I'm going to add my final. Now, I will say these are an awesome thing to make for people as uh, Christmas gifts. You can get fancy bottles and uh, really do it up. They make great hostess gifts as well. People just love that that you know moment of knowing that you've uh, you've spent some time on them, and it's such a cool personal gift to give to somebody to say like, oh, I made this lotion for you. final round. I'm going to keep it at a medium speed because I notice my screen keeps spazzing out. I'm going to get my jars prepped. another scrape down but it's starting to look uh, pretty good pretty close to where I like to have it at this point a lot of the, the fluffiness is going to come from how long you whip it it does get to be a fine dance after a while though, because the more that you're mixing it, the more friction you're going to create and friction generates heat and heat will remelt the lotion. So you do want to keep an eye on it. That's why it's really good to scrape the bowl often and kind of, uh, you'll, you'll develop a, a personal judgment for just how much, you know, the lotion can tolerate a given like your ambient temperature and humidity and in your kitchen or wherever you choose to work. But I got some pretty nice 
peaks here. The lotion isn't drippy. So I'm, I'm personally, I'm really happy with the consistency of it. It's light, it's airy. And once this sets up in the jar, it'll be, uh, it'll be a little uh, less liquidy. It just needs that time to cool down from having been exposed to all the friction of being beaten. So this is always the fun and messy part. Uh, if you're making these for other people, I always wholeheartedly suggest, you know, putting gloves on, you know, try to make it as, uh, as clean and sanitary a procedure as possible. If you're just making it for your own household, you know, you don't have to go through those extra considerations unless you want to, in which case, you know, that's cool too. I'm a dirty hippie. So this is, uh, this is just for my kids who are going to probably shove their dirty hands right into it and ruin any sanitary protocols I would have followed anyway. Vicki, got a question for you. Certainly. Uh, you mentioned before um, making them as gifts, like for Christmas gifts. Yes. Now, um, I haven't been paying uh, great attention, but is there something with fragrance in tonight's product? Yeah. Um, well, tonight uh, we have the uh, vanilla essential oil. Okay. But you can add any type of essential oil that you want. You know, just be mindful. Uh, whomever you're making it for, don't give them something that's going to, you know, trigger an allergy. Uh, some people with asthma um, can't do like eucalyptus oil. Okay. Um, I find I have migraines, so I tend to uh, go light normally on most fragrances. Mm -hmm. But, you know, vanilla doesn't bother me. Um, if you were doing a seasonal gift, say in the fall or the winter for any of those holidays, what do you use for, for fragrances? My go-to smell for the fall, honestly, I love rosemary. I think rosemary is just so wonderful. It's, it's citrusy, but it's earthy. And it's just, it's, it's all the best things I think about the, that time of year. And you can do rosemary and um, cedar is really nice. Mm -hmm. And I know it sounds strange, but um, it ends up being like more like a cologne kind of uh, muskiness. Um, mm -hmm. What else do I like? I love to throw, I can amp up the, the citrus aspect of it by adding a little bit of lemon or orange to it. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. um, I've been known to go heavy on the musk and I love myrrh. Myrrh is really nice. Mm -hmm. It pairs well with rosemary, in my opinion. Yeah, and every year people yeah. always have like, there, uh, there's always like the scent of the season. If you're ever on Pinterest, uh -huh. like you, you'll find, especially in the fall and the winter, that all you got to do is like type in essential oil combinations and you're going to get mm -hmm. so many. Um, important yeah. is always to make sure yeah. that you're getting, um, it's a therapeutic grade. You, you don't want to get like the cheapest essential oil. You want something that's going to uh, be a little higher quality. I am a fan of this company, uh, Sun Essential Oils, S-U-N. Uh, their products are really good quality, but they balance that quality with a uh, good value. Um, always you want essential oils. If they don't come in a brown or a blue glass bottle, don't buy it. It's junk. Um, essential oils are very volatile. They're very um, sensitive to, to sunlight. And so if they're not in a brown or a blue glass bottle, um, chances are by the time you get it in the mail, it's already like lost most of its scent. It will leave your hands kind of shiny. It'll take a little bit of time to, to absorb in. You'll find that a little bit goes a long way. <laughs> You don't need as much as what you're used to with um, like those pump bottles of lotion because you're getting for, for this, you're getting mostly just the oil and all the good stuff as opposed to um, pump bottles and a lot of commercially made lotions. Their number one ingredient is actually water and um, rubbing alcohol right after that. So it's actually working against you most of the time. Okay. Uh, Vicki, I have another question. You mentioned orange as a scent. Yes. I don't know if you know, um, if you remember ever making these, the orange 
the oranges with the little ribbon and the clove stuck in them? Yes, orange clove. That is a classic combination. Is there something that could mimic the clove? Oh, you can get clove oil. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, a little goes a very long way with clove oil. <laughs> the same can be said with cinnamon. Okay. So you just oh, want to have a question here. Yep. How long does a jar last? If I kept it on my dresser, how long would it stay good? Um, it should stay good. Um, honestly, like I said, I've had jars linger six months to a year and I've had no problems. Okay. Oh, here's another scent question for you. Um, I forget what I was doing. Oh, I know what it was doing. I canned some um, cranberry jam. And I didn't like it at first, you know, instead of buying the, um, the canned stuff. Um, and I didn't like it at first, but then I tried it a couple months later and the taste had settled down some. Mm -hmm. Does any, anything like that go on with the, um, the scents do you find over time? Um, sometimes scents will mellow out. Um, okay, I've actually they won't go the, other way. the opposite happens with candle making that as, um, uh -huh. The essential oils have time to mix with the other fats that you're actually going to find that the scent amplifies. So even if it doesn't seem like it's really strong, you know, the, uh, the scent will mix with the fat and it, it will have a good uh, scent release. You can add more if you want. I'm, I'm personally the kind of lady, I don't want to be smelled from across the room. It's like I said, I have migraines, so I, I need to be able to stand myself. But you can add more. I find that vanilla is just, it's a nice uh, neutral for, for a group project like this. But if you if you wanna you wanna add a little bit of punch to your, your lotion, by all means, you, you can experiment with all sorts of different uh, combinations. I have had this stuff um, stay stable at uh, eight ounces of shea butter with nearly 200 drops of essential oil. So almost double what we're using here and had no problems. Now, um, if somebody, can people add a little scent, say a couple weeks down the road, they decide they want it a little stronger? Yeah, you just have to scoop it out and re-whip it. Okay, but you do have to re-whip it, okay. You would have to re-whip it. Else what'll happen is you're just gonna end up with strange pools of um, essential oil and you don't wanna just get like raw essential oil on your skin because um, some people are highly, highly sensitive to it. And um, it has been known to give people um, something similar to a chemical burn. So okay. you don't, you don't want to ever put um, raw essential oil right onto your skin. You always want to dilute it with a carrier oil. So essentially making a uh, lotion is like the ultimate way to dilute essential oil. Now this is... Um, one color of, it, uh, of uh, shea butter. Shea actually comes in several colors. I did leave like a little uh, sheet of fun facts here. This is um, the yellow variety, but this is definitely um, the pumped up yellow variety with the, um, this one has been boiled with uh, shavings from the core of the borotutu tree. And it's uh, believed in African medicine that borotutu is a wonderful anti-inflammatory and shea butter is often seen and prescribed in African medicine as an anti-inflammatory itself. Um, for cures, like we would consider like, you know, okay, that makes sense. Um, like eczema, you know, rashes, you know, those weird little monthly spots that a lot of ladies end up getting, like the, it helps with that kind of stuff um, to help with wrinkles. But it's also believed that shea, um, when combined with massage can help with things like arthritis and rheumatism. Um, so borotutu is thought to be uh, also very helpful for that. And uh, aside from being boiled and used topically, um, they'll ingest teas made of borotutu the same way that uh, shea butter is also used for cooking. So there's a lot of like inside and outside medicine going on. So as you can see, that little bit of shea butter, once it's whipped, filled up two big, uh, two big containers here. Now, if you want to, uh, containers like this on Amazon, again, are pretty cheap. You can find uh, multi-packs 
And then that definitely, especially in the Christmas time season, like that's great because then, you know, you can just buy a big multi-pack and you can make lotion for, for your friends and family and only spend a couple dollars per person. Uh, as much as I hate giving the Bezos my money, um, as far as like these kinds of crafting supplies, there's almost no better place that you can shop and be able to get uh, quality, affordable products. Always watch for, you know, people's uh, comments, though, especially on these kinds of crafting supplies. You know, it, it sometimes the deal is just too good to be true. And so uh, make sure that uh, the sizes of the jars are, are verified on there and that um, people are saying, oh, you know, like these are good jars, you know, they didn't fall apart. You know, some jars are multi-walled, so you don't want to go to untwist something and have the whole thing fall apart on you, anything like that. Hi. Let's see. Is there anything else? Oh yeah, that was the other thing I forgot to mention. Uh, shea butter. I have, in my personal experience, um, found that when I'm using shea butter as part of my daily routine, um, you know, goes on, on the neck, back, shoulder, arms. Um, I'm less prone to sunburn. I am a very, very uh, fair-skinned lady, and uh, a lot of times, just thinking about going out into the sun in the past has produced sunburn. But when I'm really actively using my, my shea butter routine every day. Um, I find that I still need to use sunscreen, but that I get longer periods out in the sun with uh, with less reddening, which is nice. I, I have a lot less lobster-like in the summertime. And it also helps to uh, reduce the amount of freckling that I experience. Um, shea butter is, uh, it's SPF ratings on the low side compared to like the stuff that, you know, you would buy sunscreen wise, it's only like an SPF three or four, but you know, as a natural sunscreen, that's, that's pretty darn good. Uh, let me see. It's also um, technically considered non comedogenic That was my next one. Um, mom's iPad. It is, it is very low on the comedogenic score, which means that as long as you don't have like exceptionally sensitive skin, you can put this on your, you can put raw shea butter on your face, raw shea butter. And you don't have to worry about it clogging up your pores. This is where the math comes in. If you are making a lotion like this and you have sensitive skin, you need to make sure that every single item that you add in is low on the comedogenic score chart. Because if you start out with shea butter, but then you add something in there, I believe, if I remember correctly, olive oil is very high on the, the, the chart. I want to say like somewhere in an eight to 10 region. Um, don't quote me on that. I'm just trying to remember, but I think it's, it's a high one. Um, you're going to end up broken out. So you, you want to make sure I can type that in on the, uh, the chat. Let me see. Vicki, I'm sorry. Were you responding to the chat question? Can you yes, use mom's face? iPad about, can you use it on the face? Okay. Thank you. You want low comedogenic. I can spell today. I promise. We have a comment. This smells so good. I want to eat my <laughs> hand. Would you recommend that? Um, I wouldn't, but it does make you smell like cake, doesn't it? Yeah, you had me at cake batter earlier in the program. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. I, I should have done it for April Fool's. I should have made it and like left it sitting there so my kids could have thought I was making cake. <laughs> okay, another question. I assume it will stain clothes. Excellent uh, question. Well... Technically, yes, the yellow, because of the Borotutu, will stain clothes. You can get white or gray or even green shea butter. And those, uh, those are far less likely. I mean, if you, you put like this, the raw yellow, like straight from the, the bag when uh, you first got it, if you put that on your skin, you're pasty like me, you would have noticed a, a little bit of a yellow cast to your skin. It, it all depends on your skin tone and, and all of that. But yeah, it, it could stain your clothes. I mean, it's oil. So at the end of the day, if you get that all over your stuff, you're, you're probably gonna have oil stains on your clothes. Okay, 
Any other questions? Anybody want to share a picture of their their final product? Yeah, let's see. Nice. Oh, very nice. Oh, look at all you made. Awesome. Good job, ladies. Good job. Um, Mom's iPad. Yes, you can use solid coconut oil. Now, Dana and Sadie, are you keeping those for yourselves? I know you're keeping some, Dana, because you said you'd have it on your, your um, dresser. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, you're inhaling it. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, I have, a lo I was telling Vicki earlier, I have lotion spread um, around the house strategically. Okay, any other questions at all? Okay. Uh, Vicki, as she mentioned, she makes candles and um, we do have candle making programs occasionally. I don't think we have any planned at the moment. Is that correct? Not, not at the moment. Um, I already have all of my booking through the month of April and May. Okay. I don't believe that we're going to be doing any adult programs um, okay. with me yeah. probably until um, the fall again, because I'm going to be teaching the children's programs, which reminds me, we're going to be starting a kid's summer camp. Um, it's going to be spaces are limited. So if you, you like what I do and your kids like me, um, please sign up quickly because we do anticipate that spaces are going to fill up fast. And we know that the summer camp for town, um, the, the rec program is also very limited in space. So get in now, early. Yeah. We're sorry I, we could have more spaces. When will your program start running that camp program? Um, I believe that's supposed to start mid or end of June. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so keep an eye out on um, on the website or our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, blah, 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 all that stuff um, to uh, if you're interested in that and it will be announced on those places. Yeah, so that'll be fun. Okay. Uh, one last call for questions before we log off. No, no, yep, no. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Um, we appreciate it so much. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. It was fun. Yeah, it was really cool. Was it thank fun? You for supporting a local Make artist. It. Yeah, it smells great in my kitchen. Oh, that's <laughs> I know this is my favorite smell. <laughs> It smells like cake. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I am always happy to share cake lotion with everybody. <laughs> so glad you enjoyed it all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vicki, again, for sharing your talents and passion with the community. And uh, this recording will probably be up in a, a few days. I have a bit of a backlog on them to do, but it'll be on our YouTube channel. And um, let me actually put that link out our YouTube channel. And please don't keep a secret. Tell, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your worst enemies. The more, more people that we get to sign up and express interest for these programs, the more yes. we can offer programs like this, not just with artists like me, but other members of the community as well. We've had some really cool programs in the past, including how to make um, reusable uh, waxed cloth, as opposed to having mm -hmm. to use um, like plastic wrap, We've had a wonderful, talented woman who teaches um, how to make uh, felted stuffed animals. There's so many great things and, uh, and uh, classes that the, the library offers. Hey, yes, Vicki, I want to... I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm going to talk about the candle making oh, that we did with the rose petals. Oh, yeah. I, I almost caught my hand on fire. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I, I had it on the mantle. And all of a sudden, there was just flames going up. And so I guess my rose petals, the rose petals were burning. <laughs> oh, geez. So I oh, guess I did. I to make sure to keep those rose petals as pressed in yeah. as possible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was funny. <laughs> well, she's still smiling. <laughs> oh, my yeah. goodness.
Yeah, it's okay. But it was funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, Vic, absolutely correct that we do love to use um, to uh, work with local talent. So if you or anyone else you, you know is uh, has a talent they'd like to share, they can contact the library. And we always try to do local first. Sometimes it just doesn't work out for whatever reason. And we go a little further afield. Um, but yes, we do, we do love to uh, work with our, our local talent. So thank mm -hmm. you again, everyone, for coming. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. And mm -hmm. um, this will be up on our YouTube channel forever. So, you know, when the holidays come around or somebody's birthday comes around or some special occasion or you run out, just come back to the YouTube channel and watch it again. Okay? Mm -hmm. All, All right. right. Thank you very much, Vicki, for presenting for us. Have Thank you night. so much for hosting, Ann. Oh, you're welcome. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. Thank you, Vicki. I'm going to close up shop. Awesome. Have a good, good night. night.